So welcome to the beautiful world of aquascaping, to the Green Aqua Gallery on this really hot summer day. This is a regular day at Green Aqua, so there you, you're going to hear the phones ringing and you're going to hear the people talking. Obviously, uh, we're not going to be sidetracked by that, and it's going to be probably like that in every episode that we have. So today we're going to introduce you to this uh, gallery show tank uh, that uh, you have behind me. It is a 450 liter tank uh, with the dimensions of 150 by 60 by 50 centimeter. We had uh, originally developed the size of this tank uh, to accommodate a, a, a layout that has a lot of depth. And we used the 60 centimeters towards the back of the tank in order to build gradually a long hardscape towards the back and give additional depth. The height, the, the height of 50 centimeters will enable us to have the water level, the top of the water, relatively low, which means that the whole scape will look very panoramic with the big depth and the smaller height. So I would, if, if you're thinking in terms of a, of a layout that has a lot of depth and the, the hardscape itself is close to the surface, you should think uh, along these terms. Uh, we have I, I just have to look at it because we have so many plants in this aquarium. One, two, three, thirteen types of plants. We actually used about uh, 140 pots of different plants. Uh, they were sponsored by Denerle, so uh, we thank again uh, Alex Veresh and Denerle for uh, providing us uh, with the good quality plants that we used in this tank. The general idea behind building the tank was uh, using those plants in patches and uh, those patches will add to the the detail of the layout uh, which means that that we were using the plants scattered along the scape in small chunks in small bunches and uh, these will will make the layout look a little bit bigger and uh, obviously it needs a lot of trimming and uh, we have done a trimming video on this one uh, you can check it out on your youtube channel uh, if you scroll down a little bit um, and uh, it's only a short video that shows you uh, uh, how to trim but basically what I wanted to do is to keep all the foreground plants and the background plants as well as low as possible. The technology behind this aquarium is the usual uh, green aqua style technology that we've been using. It is uh, an ADA uh, solar RGB uh, lit tank and the solar RGBs are probably the best lights that we were using uh, uh, so far. Uh, the color rendering and the whole uh, color composition of the light is exceptional. All the reds that you can see in the background for the stamp lens, the Rotala uh, HRA in special, are absolutely stunning under these uh, light conditions. So uh, in, if you're thinking about uh, having beautiful red plants, uh, we, sh we would absolutely recommend you to use these uh, ADA solar RGB lights. Uh, as far as the filtration goes, uh, we were using two 2080 Eheim filters uh, below this tank. Uh, and we were using two of, of the filters because uh, uh, the, the, the tank size, the 150, size would not allow us to use only one filter. Uh, the inflow uh, will not, would not penetrate the tank in its whole length, which means that if, if you have the inflow from coming from this side and the water comes here, it would not be able to go all the way to the other side. This uh, setup enables us to have a flow coming in from the left, going into the middle, going down, and then going back 
on the bottom of the tank towards the suction side of the filter. And on the opposite is the same, it's coming from the right side, going to the middle, going down, and then going back to the right. The filter material that we were using in these uh, Eheim filters is the uh, uh, CCAM matrix filter material, which is a really good filter material, would not change the pH of the water. For those of you who do not know, the filtration is very important because you need to have as many bacteria in your filter as possible. Uh, if you have a lot of bacteria in your filter, uh, the, the biological uh, decomposition or uh, the cycle of transforming the ammonia into nitrates uh, is done effectively. And uh, when, you, when you have that done effectively, the chance of algae is much lower. So basically for algae you need a lot of light and you need a lot of ammonia. So your main goal with this uh, filtration is to avoid having a lot of ammonia. As far as the fertilizing goes, um, we are using the ADA Ferts regime, which means that uh, we are very low on uh, nitrates in the Ferts. And um, we really like the ADA fertilizing because it's a subtle thing that goes well with the ADA Amazonia substrate that we were using in this tank and they complete each other perfectly. So for those of you guys who are considering having the ADA fertilizers, I would definitely recommend to have the uh, ADA substrate system as well. Uh, along the ADA uh, uh, aqua soil Amazonia that we are using in, in most of our tanks. This is our favorite. We were using the uh, Danelet Deponit Mix Professional 9-in-1 uh, substrate. The livestock in this tank is uh, 200 neon tetras and uh, we really like uh, the way that they compensate for the reds and the greens of the plants and we always wanted to have a bigger uh, school of fish and obviously we have a lot of autosynclus affinis and a lot of uh, mono shrimp and uh, some cleton snails which are helping us with the black brush algae uh, actually the cleton snails are the only ones that uh, i know of that uh, are really helping uh, uh, to get rid of this algae which is uh, present in some of the good quality and uh, highlights and good 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 well filtered tanks so uh, it, uh, it is helping us to keep this tank, uh, I would, you know, brag about being completely algae free. Uh, if I'm looking close, I cannot really see any, any problems uh, with the technology and the build of this tank. The temperature is fine, the pH is fine, the water is fine. We're using RO, reverse osmosis water, uh, that we treat with the green aqua uh, uh, salts. Uh, adding some calcium and magnesium back to the otherwise clean H2O and uh, the filtration is fine, the CO2 system is an external reactor, uh, the light as I told you it's an ADA uh, solar RGB, the tank is an OptiWhite tank, so uh, oh, we are using Twinstar as well uh, to help us uh, keeping the algae at bay and we're using the surface skimmer uh, here as well as, uh, as in other tanks uh, that uh, we have. Let me quickly go through the, the plants that we are using here. Eleocaris articularis in the background. Uh, there's a path made of uh, Colorado sand in the middle, starting from the middle, going to the far right of the tank. And along this path in the far right, you have the Articularis uh, mini grass. And uh, also we are using other, other mini grass uh, types like Parvula uh, here in the foreground and a little bit in the middle, in the, in the, in the mid-ground. And obviously we are using the uh, Denerle Hemianthus calitricoides pads, uh, which are kept down by putting some little rocks on the top so they don't come up. Uh, some people had problems with using these um, pads and they, they were complaining that they are coming up and um, my suggestion is you should just put some, some rocks, uh, some small pieces of rocks on, on them or next to them so that they keep them down and obviously when the roots will grow a little bit we know that uh, Hemianthus calitricoides does not have big roots but uh, it will help you keep uh, the pads down in the long run. 
and you also need to trim those regularly because if the plant grows then a lot of oxygen will oxygen bubbles will stay on it and it, they will try to also drag it up other than that uh, in the background we have quite a few uh, red stems uh, we added uh, some of the red stems later because uh, we thought that it would be nice to have a nice red finish in the background uh, for the plants uh, and and uh, also, we have like one, two, three, four, five, six varieties of, uh, of uh, stem plants in the background, and those are Ludwigia arcuata, you have Pocostemon erectus, you have uh, Rotala velici, and you have Hemianthus micrantemoides, which is a strange kind of plant because we, we, I, was, I was trying to use it as a foreground plant here. So uh, I started from the left as a foreground plant, as, as, and as we go up, I will gradually leave it grow higher and higher to the point where there's almost 10 centimeters high in the background there between the two rocks. Uh, other than that, we added uh, some beautiful plants also later from, um, from Aquaflora, which is the Mayaca fluvialitis and the Limnophila, uh, those are in the middle. So. Um, those uh, stem plants will give you a nice uh, background. I didn't mention Ranunculus inundatus, obviously. I really like this plant because it, it gives you a little color to the foreground and in, to the midground. Uh, the only problem is that you need to really take care to trim it regularly and not let it run uh, everywhere because this plant has the tendency to, to, to just you know, run everywhere and cover the whole foreground of your tank. So basically I would say that, that if you trim it and you don't let it go and you trim the big leaves that are growing up higher and also form bigger leaves, then uh, you would have a really nice, uh, uh, really nice variety to your foreground. And we were using Storogyne Repens and we were using Hydrocotyle Verticillata also to add in patches, to add a little detail to the tank. Also, we were using the Marsilia crenata in the foreground to add a little bit dark green color uh, to the otherwise a little bit lighter plants uh, that uh, we were using. And we were using the petrified wood as a, a hardscape, the rocks. And uh, those are compensating the uh, green of the plants and the reds of the stem, stems in the background quite well. Uh, so basically, this is the aquarium. We are doing a maintenance, uh, weekly maintenance of about uh, one, one hour every week, not more than one hour every week with the water changes and cleaning a little bit of algae from the, from the glass uh, or any uh, residue that has uh, uh, appeared appear there. And um, I'm, I'm doing the trimming probably, I can do a trimming every second week or every three weeks and I do it for about two hours the most. And then I do a water change and, and it's perfectly well. So uh, for those of you who you know, would complain that main maintenance for a tank like this uh, takes a lot of time, I would encourage you not to be afraid of, of uh, this because obviously it needs more uh, maintenance uh, than a usual uh, uh, minimalistic Iwagumi aquarium. Uh, we have uh, also aquariums like that in our gallery and I'm going to present you uh, in one of the future episodes. Uh, so if you, if you like uh, what you see here and if you'd like to know more about this tank or more about the other tanks or if you have any general questions about aquascaping and uh, would like to have a tank of your own and if you think that I missed something in this uh, uh, episode, please feel free to uh, uh, write to us and we will be happy to uh, help you and to answer your questions. So this was it. Basically guys, uh, until next time, see ya.